Hi booktube, it's Missy and today I'm here to finally film another video. Um, I've had several of you wonderful uh, subscribers contact me on Instagram and say how much you missed my videos and where was I and what am I doing. <sighs> well, I, you know, I have to say it's been a struggle. I've been struggling. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to do is, if you don't mind seeing the same outfit, um, my husband took the kids outside. The beaches are open again in San Diego, and so he took them out and to kind of um, feel normal again. Um, my friend and I, we had a, um, a birthday date that we were supposed to go to. Both of our birthdays are on March 19th, and so we planned to go to Book Off, which is my favorite bookstore in San Diego. We planned to go on March 13th, but the 13th is the day that we, you know, <laughs> stopped going outside. Quarantine started on the 13th, and so, yeah, we never got to go to our birthday date, and we never got to go to books, and so we went to book off today. Um, the store is now open. They do make you stand in a line outside because they're only allowing like 30 people into the store at one time, which is absolutely fine. There isn't a time limit, but, you know, for health reasons, breathing in, you know, your own like bacteria filled air over and over again can cause respiratory issues. Um, my friend's dad has it just because he breathes through a mask uh, for his work all day and he doesn't get to take it off and so just the circulation is not good for you and he's older so he has like a chest infection right now. So to keep um, us marginally healthy we put ourselves, you know, we gave ourselves a little time limit that we wouldn't stay in the store for very long. And so we did get some books and then we uh, went to a ramen um, shop right next door and we got takeout and then we just ate our ramen in her car and talked story since we haven't seen each other in three months. It was really nice to be able to see my friend again um, and we did it safely. And, uh, yeah, but today is Saturday, and today is, like, the first weekend of my summer vacation. School ended on Wednesday, so I don't have to teach anymore for the rest of the week, and so that is good. I did get my BoxyCharm for June, so this is going to be a book haul from Book Off, and then... Afterwards, if you no longer want to spend any time with me um, because you're just here for the books, then of course uh, I appreciate you stopping by and then I will have the unboxing of the makeup at the end of the video. Wow, this is already a very long intro. Okay, so my goal today at Book Off was just to go down the $1 aisle and pick anything out that I saw that I've been wanting and has been on my wish list. A lot of the times when I, you know, in normal situations, I would spend hours in there really like looking at every spine, reading all the synopsises, but I, you know, wanted to stay somewhat, um, you know, healthy. And so I just kind of breezed through the store quickly. Um, but I think I got a decent amount of stuff. So the first thing I want to share with you guys is the Hidden Staircase by Nancy Drew. Um, I read this edition. This is the 1958. Is that 58? Let me double check. 59. The 1959 um, hardback edition. These don't have any dust jackets on them. My stepmom, when I was 10, owned the entire series. And at 10 years old, I fell in love with Nancy Drew. And um, the Hidden Staircase and The Secret of the Old Clock, I believe, is the title, were my absolute favorites. Now, as a 10-year-old, I want to believe I read the entire series, but for some reason, I only remember these two um, titles. 
and of course I am 39 so it's a possibility that I've actually read all the other ones and I just don't remember um, but yeah I saw this for a dollar and even though I don't own the entire collection I wanted to have a piece of my childhood so yeah I'm very excited to have it and uh, I love mystery so that I'm just gonna add to my kids bookshelf and then next I found behind the bookcase this is by Mark Sneesland and illustrated by Kelly Murphy. Now this has been on my radar um, for like five years now. It is usually on Book Outlet and I've looked at it wondering whether I wanted to buy it or not. And today I decided, heck, it's only a dollar, might as well. Um, <laughs> I love it when there's little things in here. It says two... Kira with love from Betta? Betty? Beto? Not sure. Um, but yeah, this is just a middle grade horror book. And if you guys know me, you know how much I love horror and how much I needed my children to love horror. So their bookshelf is triple stacked with tons of baby horror in it. And um, so I'll just add that to the collection. I'm excited to try that one out. The next book I got was Sadie by Courtney Summers. Now I did read Courtney Summers um, P.S. This Isn't a Test. Is that what the book is called? This is not a test. It's not P.S. Just This Is Not a Test. Which I found really good. It's a zombie book mixed with like the breakfast club. So there's a bunch of kids that are locked in their school uh, gymnasium and there's zombies outside and they're all like trying to figure out whether or not they want to leave and like try to escape to go somewhere else. Some kids are saying well we're safe here, the cafeteria is here, we're going to be fine and then others are like we really need to escape unless we get trapped in here. Um, so I really liked that book and I read it I think back in like 2004. Um, I know this book came out last year. Was it last year or the year before? 2018. Um, and I've seen it on BookTube many times. I know that Lala, Books and Lala, has read it and reviewed it. I think she think, thought it was a good book. I cannot remember. But um, I recognized it. It was a book that I wanted to read, so I picked it up. And in the inside it says that there is, um, it says a, a girls go missing and um, a, a sister, uh, an older sister, like a teenage sister, loses her little baby sister and she decides that she's going to go after the killer. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. And um, so the story is alternating between um, Sadie's like narrative and um, and a podcast with transcripts so I, I liked that it was like a different kind of format and that it was a a book surrounding like a killer you know murder mysteries I like murder mysteries so I got it and then the next book I got was David Arnold's The Strange Fascinations of Noah Hypnotic now I'm pretty sure I don't own this book there's sometimes where I want a book and I add it to my list and then I don't buy it because I'm waiting for the price to go down. This one in particular, I didn't, I don't think I liked this cover as much as I liked the other cover, but I do own um, David Arnold's other two books in hardcover, so at least it'll match on the shelves. Mosquito Land was amazing. I absolutely loved it. I have Kids of Appetite. Where is it? It's on my shelf. I just saw it yesterday. I guess it doesn't matter. I do have Kids of Appetite, but I have not read it yet. Um, David Arnold writes um, like a contemporary coming-of-age stories with diverse characters, and they usually have to overcome some kind of scenario. This one is about a boy who gets hypnotized and it's a stunning surrealist portrait 
a story about all the ways we hurt our friends without knowing it and all the ways they stick around to save us. So here's the inside. Underneath the dust jacket is this nice blue color with, ooh, love the pink uh, spine. So I'm excited to own this. And again, it was a dollar. And his writing is really nice because it's easy to read and I like, I like his dialogue. So I was excited about that. And then I've been wanting to read this book for years now since it first came out. And that is The Girl in 6E by A.R. Torrey. Um, this year's most shocking thriller. Special introductory prize. Okay. Uh, a dollar. So excited. Um, my BFF Penelope read it and loved it. And um, so what I know or what I think I know about this series is it's about a woman who has killer tendencies and instead of um, acting out on those tendencies she locks herself up in her apartment and becomes a cam girl and I am old so I think a cam girl is just a girl who like live streams herself doing you know dirty things maybe they do other things too I'm not sure but this is like a erotica slash <laughs> killer book a thriller or something like that I don't know um, but on the back it says don't leave the apartment never let anyone in don't kill anyone so she's a cam girl in order to get money so that way she can like buy her groceries and continue to live in her apartment and everything um, and then she's like locking herself up to save people from out the outside world so I was able to buy this one and the sequel do not disturb um, for a dollar each that was really exciting they didn't have the third book I looked which would have been nice if I could have gotten all three of them but um this one also has it's like a signed book Haley welcome to the freak show I hope you enjoy by Alexandra uh, Jane I don't know if that is just you know somebody giving her this book or if that is the author's signature it doesn't really match so maybe not or maybe that is Tori that looks like a J doesn't it maybe it's a T sometimes um, <coughs> it's so dry sometimes um, the cursive T looks like a J anywho I'm excited about those two and then I found this okay I lied about my criteria I did I did not have this on my radar prior to stepping into the store but um, the spine caught my attention because it's illustrated and then I pulled the book out to look at the cover and that interested me and then I looked at the back and then of course I was like sold so this is a it says a master of classical form this is called 77 clocks a peculiar crimes unit mystery by Christopher Fowler I own another book by Christopher Fowler don't I the name Christopher is so uh, common especially if you were born in the 70s and 80s um, you guys all know my husband's name is Christopher Fowler all right oh okay so Christopher Fowler wrote the um, the Nick Nick to Nick to phobia book that I read last year um, which was about a house in Spain that had like two sides to the house so there was the light side and the dark side and the wife um, moved in and she tried to open up the she wanted to open up the dark side because she thought that there were people living on the other side 
and um, I thought the story was good but kind of slow and I didn't feel like I would pick it up again so hopefully since this is the same author hopefully uh, this is good and it catches my attention it, it sounds good. It's nice and floppy. I absolutely adore this. Who who made this? Who published this? A lot of the times, the, pu the publishers... Uh, no, this is Bantam Books. I don't know what I was going to say. A anyways, uh, it says here, A mysterious stranger in outlandish Edwardian garb defaces a pre-Raphaelite painting in the National Gallery. Then a guest at the exclusive Savy Savoy Hotel is fatally bitten by a marshland snake. Over the next several days, an outbreak of increasingly bizarre crimes will hit London and fittingly come to the attention of the Peculiar Crimes Unit. And that's all I wanted to read. This, this synopsis reminded me of um, Jasper, Jasper, Fo Jasper Ford? Floyd? Floyd, Fjord, Jasper Ford. <laughs> I think it's Jasper Ford. Um, yeah, it reminded me of Jasper Ford, and so I had to have it. So I bought it. And then the last book I found at Book Off. I <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the last book I found at Book Outlet, again, wasn't on my radar prior to uh, walking in the store, so I, I lied a little bit. I forgot I bought these. Okay, this is called Real World, and this is by Natsu Kiro Kirino? Kirino? Uh, this is the author of Out. I didn't read uh, the book Out, but this one says that um, there are five, four teenage girls that um, hang out all the time and then their neighbor's son is a suspect in a killing and um, they decide to uh, I think they decide to investigate or something like that but right now I guess I'll, I'll give you guys a, a little sneak peek on what I'm working on verbally and then um, hopefully in the next week or so I'm able to give you guys a review but um, I'm reading Japanese horror. I've already read two. My goal was to read three and then talk about them in a new series. And so, just so you know, that's going to happen. So I might read this one. I might read uh, more because I want to read The Tenth Girl as well. That's why I bought that one. No, it's not The Tenth Girl. It's The Apartment. Where is The Apartment one? All my books are here on the floor. Um, I think it's like something apartment, but that's also Japanese horror. Um, I, I feel like there's a a thing with Japanese horror where they, uh, or, or maybe just it's the ones that I've read recently have been short story collections where I thought they were going to be like, full-length novels but they were short story collections and all of the characters in the short story collections are all the same and they all are it, all of the stories are in the same world but they're like separate because there's different like things going on that the kids are facing or that the people are facing so I wanted to compare and contrast other Japanese horror to see if that is something that is similar is that the word I want to say yeah so anyways um, I wanted to pick this up because it sounded good and it sounds like a little horror, Asian horror thriller, and it's short. So, I'm trying to stick with the short books recently. Ooh, and it's deckled edges. Because I just, I don't have time right now. Oh, wow, wait. Check that out. Can you see that? Maybe? It's, it's like marble, yeah? But it's black and silver, so it's, it looks kind of like granite. Oh my god, this is the most <laughs> beautiful book I've ever seen. Oh, I love it so much. Who needs a just jacket when your book looks like that? That's sick. 
All right, the very last book I want to talk about is not from Book Outlet. I was I got this from a friend. Um, her and I have been exchanging, not exchanging, I apologize. I've been her library for the last four years. And so whenever she needs a new book to read, um, I take a picture of my bookshelves and she chooses three books that sound interesting to her and then um, I let her have them. She works with me at work. And since um, quarantine, I've been um, taking the books, putting them in a tote bag and setting it on her bed, on her porch. And then she does the same for me. She'll put the books that she's already read in a tote bag and then um, I'll bring my books home. So she gave me this book and uh, it's called The Favorite Daughter, which is funny because it says it's from Book Off and I, I don't believe I bought this and let her borrow it. I don't know where she got this from. I don't think this is mine. I don't think this is mine. I can't. I don't think this is mine. I'm pretty sure she gave this to me because she read it and she didn't want it anymore. But just to have the book off sticker on the back is really weird. Wait, did I go to book off with her? <laughs> Okay, whenever my friends and I hang out, or if I haven't taken a friend to book off before, that is like the place that I usually go. So I've introduced book off to many of my friends. We might have actually gone to book off together. <laughs> and I, I think we did. And then she bought the book while we were there and then she doesn't want it anymore so she gave it to me. That would make more sense. So yes, that particular book is from Book Off. Okay, um, it's been 25 minutes now. I've barely said anything of value. Um, how are you guys doing? I, I just, I'm not like going cuckoo from being in the house all day. I really am a homebody and this hasn't really changed my outlook on the outside world very much. Um, because I've always been very comfortable in my 900 square foot apartment. However, uh, I miss my friends. That's the only thing I miss. Like I don't mind staying in the house all day, but I do miss adult conversation, especially when I'm stuck in the house with two teenage boys that all they wanna do is play video games and I don't blame them. I've been addicted to Animal Crossing since March 26th when I got the game in the mail. Um, and my husband has the, um, he's essential because he's a biologist, scientist, you know, he works for the pharmaceutical companies and they're trying to work on things. Uh, and so he gets to go outside to work and even though he would like to switch places with me and stay home all day in his pajamas. Um, at least he gets adult conversation. I do not. So it was nice to be able to go out today and have lunch with my friends in her car and spend about 45 minutes in book off getting some new books that I absolutely don't need but I definitely wanted. And I'm so happy that my husband took the kids to the beach today. Uh, that way I can spend some time with you guys because they drive me crazy and then I don't get to film when they're at home. <laughs> so uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend so far. I'm going to try to post this uh, today, maybe tomorrow. I, you're going to see this after I post the other video. Um, I did do a May book haul unboxing and um, I made that one like four weeks ago three weeks ago before before the riots I made this video and um, and so it's like yeah it's all devastating it makes me afraid to go outside anyways um, I hope you guys are doing well and for those that would like to see the makeup that I bought let's unbox them all right, so if I get off my bed, 
um, it will make the camera tilt. And so I'm just going to have to be a barbarian and rip open these boxes by hand. Hope you don't mind. Alright, so this one in the pink box is the, um, the Conspiracy palette, which I'm just so super stoked for. Alright, so here it is. Um, I did watch the entire Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star series on um, Shane's channel, and the making of this palette was really cool. And um, I really wanted to buy it, but I knew that it was going to be one of those things that I'd have to wait. And when they said that it was going to come out in March as um, a relaunch, I was super excited because I was like, oh, I'll buy it for my birthday. But it never did because of COVID. Um, so here is the box, the Unicarton. And then it pulls out. Doesn't it pull out? Yeah, like so. And there it is. It's so pretty. And here's the clasps. Let's look inside. Oh my gosh. There it is. Look it, look it, look it. I am obsessed with greens, so I'm really looking forward to. Um, Oh my gosh, to these green colors. Look how pretty. Yay! I've been dying. It doesn't smell like root beer. I thought it was supposed to smell like root beer. But it's so crazy to watch this whole, oop, the, the, <laughs> the mirror. It's so crazy to see this whole thing being made and how Shane had to work his way through all these different pigments to figure out which one he actually wanted and which one would work well. Um, ooh, this one's called Sleep Paralysis. Let's see that one. Ooh, I like that one too. It's got like, um, like a grayish sparkly taupe. So pretty. Yeah, I was dying for this palette, but I knew that I wouldn't be able to get it right away, and so I didn't even bother trying. Um, I do have his uh, Beauty Killer palette, his Androgyny palette, his Blood Sugar palette, his Alien palette. Um, I didn't want Jawbreaker because those colors are too bright for me. I don't think I would wear them. And I didn't want the Blue Blood palette or the Royal Blood palette because that was mostly blues and mostly purples and I don't really wear those colors but um, these ones are pretty I do like reds and I like greens so hopefully one day he makes like a mostly green palette I would totally buy that um, and then I always keep my unicartons because I think it's easier just to stack everything up in my little closet with it all in there but this is so cool. I absolutely love it. And then the other palette that I got, which was another, like, not conspiracy. People were upset that Jeffrey made a palette that was called Cremated. And, um, which is, you know, was it, was it bad timing? Maybe. But we all die, and even though having the, um, the virus absolutely sucks, obviously, uh, and you don't wish that on anybody, not talking about death is kind of absurd because, again, it's inevitable. And he didn't make this palette during quarantine. It was in production. He just had to post it or, like, release it during quarantine. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to sell it um, until next year. So from a business standpoint, I understand. And from an emotional standpoint, for me personally, it didn't affect me, but was it um, tactless for other people? Possibly. And that's what people were, were talking about anyway, online. Um, so here's the paper that has the urns on it. Uh, in high school, I... <laughs> I was a goth for 
oh, about a month while I was in ninth grade. I had black hair. I wore the dark makeup. I wore combat boots. I wore leather. Um, it didn't last very long, but I will try to find a picture on my computer and I will put it here of my gothic phase. Um, but I was super excited about this palette because this is a cool toned palette and I think I personally look better in cooler tones than in warm tones. Um, so this is what the palette looks like. This one is a little bit more expensive than the other one and that's because it has one extra row of, um, of eyeshadows. People are saying, well, this is a Unicar in that's not as luxe as the other one. Why would you pay more? Again, you're, it's, there's an extra row of, of eyeshadows. So you're, you're paying like, like $5 more for an extra row of eyeshadows. All right. Ah, uh, I love chunky glitter. So pretty. So here, here's the palette. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it online. People were complaining that everything looked the same, but even though they might look the same color in the pan, they're not the same color on your skin because they have different undertones to it. Um, but this is the kind of like gray brown that I would absolutely wear every single day on my eyelids as a quick one shadow look because it just looks really good with my skin tone and it's easy. Whereas, you know, sometimes you'll get, um, if you use a warm color, it starts to get muddy sometimes over time because of the, if you don't use a primer, you'll get like crease lines or whatnot. I tend to find uh, that the cooler tones with the one eyeshadow all along the lid lasts all day, whereas if I try to put more colors it starts to blend a little bit or um, smear but yeah it's so pretty Look at this silver color this is the worst lighting because right now I'm just using natural light I didn't want to bother putting on the other ones it's too hot that's why you hear my fan in the background can you see that there's some silver glitz right there Ooh. all right I love it. I can't wait to play with it. Ooh, embalmed. Wow. It, it's kind of, well, you can't tell. Um, it's a green gray. It's a green gray with sparkles in it, so it kind of looks like um, marble. You know, when you, you see the veins, it looks like a vein from the marble, like a marble countertop. That's super cool. Molossian looks amazing. Everyone's been talking about diamond ashes. Whoa. No joke. Let's see. <laughs> Jeez Louise, look at that shine. It's like the Tin Man. Excellent. All right. Anyways, super excited. I've been dying for these. I'm glad I was able to get them. If you don't like Jeffree Star, I apologize for sharing it on my channel, um, but we all like different things, and I might not like what you like, so we all have to be different. Anywho, yay. And then the last thing I have here is my BoxyCharm box. Um, my friend, I convinced her to get it for her birthday, and so she's been getting it every month, and we call each other and share pictures of what each, each which we got what we got in our boxes so i'm curious to know what came in mine since i already got to see what was in hers all right yes cool okay so the first thing in the box here's a sneaky peek she got lip liners i don't have lip liners in mine and she also got an eye cream which i got an eye cream like last month and something else that I thought was really cool. So the first thing I got here is Dr. Brandt's um, Hydro Bi Biotic Recovery Sleeping Mask. Deeply hydrates and moisturizes to reduce redness and signs of irritation. 
let's see what it looks like. Ooh. There we go. I do have a Dr. Brandt um, exfoliating cream, which was a limited edition kind of thing, which I really, really like, and I've been using it. Um, aw. Oh. The, the little tabby thing is on there to keep it, you know, high. Um. <laughs> What's the word called? I, I don't know why I want to say hydrated. That's not the word. Uh, to keep it hygienic um it doesn't it doesn't smell bad it smells good so i'll definitely be checking that out and this is um 52 dollars Ooh! oh my gosh i absolutely need this so we have first a uh first aid beauties bump eraser body scrub with 10 percent aha Safe for sensitive skin. This is an exfoliant. Um, I have those bumps. Is it just girls that get them or do boys get them too? Ever since I um, hit puberty and then it got really bad when I was uh, pregnant. But I have all these little tiny, tiny bumps all over my arms. And they're not, they're not whiteheads or anything they're just bumps and they drive me crazy and my sister my little sister who's 19 her arms are covered in them so if I like this I might buy her one too but I'm looking forward to trying this out I don't um, have very many body scrubs so this will be fun to use bump eraser body scrub and this thing is $18. That's actually not that bad. I always thought First Aid Beauty was super expensive. $18 seems a little pricey, but when you think about with the AHA, those things tend to be a little bit more expensive. All right, and then I got some more um, Alamar uh, brushes. I do have these brushes, I think, not in the green, but in a different color. I don't think you can have too many brushes in my opinion um, so we'll see I'll, I'll check and see if I have these exact same ones and if I do I'll give them to my sister there's a little collection over here on my bookshelf of all the things from the um, the boxy charm boxes that I'm going to be giving to my little sister um, she's in college and poor and so she would enjoy those uh, and the brush trio is $18 so we have a blending brush a um, a packer and then like a eyeliner brush there all right next I have touch of soul and this is uh, by oh that's the brand touch of soul this is pretty filter glassy skin balm an ultra hydrating priming skin balm with a sensationally smooth texture that melts into your skin and creates the ultimate glow that lasts throughout the day. Ooh, this is $32. It's called Glassy. Glassy skin. Oh, Touch of Soul is a Korean brand. So if you can read Korean, there we go. Very nice, very nice. I do not have any body glowing products let's see what that looks like hmm. it doesn't it looks just like a any old cream and I don't see any sparkles in it oh okay so it's kind of like it's called glassy. It's kind of like, um, you probably can't see it. It just, it looks wet. So it's going to make your skin look <laughs> wet. Uh, maybe it's like a, like a, a very soft within glowy kind of thing. It smells nice. I'll test it out. All right. And then the last thing in the box is from Cover FX. And these are glitter drops. And the glitter drops... Oh, did I say how much the Touch of Soul was? This is $32. And then the Cover FX Glitter Drops is $44. This is um, the color Lunar. Wow! 
Holy smokes, it's blue. Oh my gosh. I must try. I must try. Ah! <laughs> Look it! Oh my gosh. Wait, let me do it on, on a hand that doesn't have anything yet. So you, you could see the magic. It's like unicorn tears. I don't know when I would ever use this. I'm not one of those kids that go out and put blue all over their face, but look at that shine. You see the blue? Ooh, blue. Sure, why not? Okay, I love this. Oh my gosh, so fun. I'm, I'm, I wanna be more fun. Can I be more fun? Okay, yay. It's called Lunar. All right, this wasn't bad. I like this box. Um, everything in here I'll pretty much keep unless I give those brushes to my sister. And the theme for this month was called Oasis. Is that it? There's nothing on the inside? Okay, all right. Um, if you've been here on my channel before and you don't know anything about BoxyTrap, I'll leave the link down below. I'm not a... Uh, I don't know what they're called. I, I don't have any affiliate codes. They they don't give me these for free. I do have to pay for them with my allowance. Um, they are $25 a month for five full-size products. And um, you can, you know, you just cancel online if you don't want it anymore. But the cool thing is that every month it's going to be more than the than the money you spent for the box. So, like, this is $44 for some blue glit. God, they, it's so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. Um, yeah, it, it, this might not be your cup of tea, which is fine. You can always give it away to somebody. But um, I like having a surprise every month, something that takes me outside my comfort zone or something that I wouldn't really necessarily reach for and then find out that I really do enjoy especially skincare um, I don't know how these work and I don't want to spend the money on it and you could say well you did just spend the money yeah I did but I spent $25 for all of these products and I get to test them out and if I like them I can get them again so I'm happy that for the things that I've received that is everything for makeup and all of the books that um, I purchased this month. I will be saving one more from, um, what's his name? Nathan Pyle. I'll, I'll leave um, a picture of his book here, but he wrote Strange Planet. I follow him on Instagram and he does all of those little alien panels when the aliens are like doing human things but they're making it weird because they use like different words that mean the same but nobody uses it in that kind of context. Um, so his second book came out and I pre-ordered it from Books A Million and so that will be coming to my house sometime this week or next week. And then I also bought another book that I've been wanting on my, that has been on my wish list for a long time, which is White is White Witching or, I'll leave the book here. It's um, it's like White, white Witching or White is for Witching, something like that. Anywho. I've been wanting it for a really long time. I'm hoping the cover matches the one that I wanted off of Amazon because I'm all about my additions, so we'll see. Other than that, I hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, um, and I will talk to you in my next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.